My sister is asleep in her bedroom, um, just, just down the hall. So I may speak very quietly during this video. Um, just I'm terrified of her listening, even though um, she's probably subscribed to my channel and knows what I'm doing anyway. So in January, I read five books. The first book I read was Evelina by Frances Burney. This book was published in 1778. The reason I wanted to read this was because it um, apparently inspired Jane Austen to write. So I was really curious to read something that she herself was inspired by. It was also a big hit when it came out in the 1700s. So it's really interesting to see female writers being successful during a time when uh, female writers weren't really accepted or seen as like proper writers. The book is written in the form of letters, mostly from the main character Evelina to her um, adopted father who's a reverend. The book is meant to be a satire on the society of the time and also tells this sort of kind of scandalous story about um, Evelina's past um, because her mother died when she was born and her father kind of just left her and wouldn't accept her as his heir. Most of the book involves Evelina travelling to London. Um, she's only 17 so she's never been in society before and so she discovers quite how horrendous people can be. She meets a lot of foppish, um, excruciatingly awful men and she also meets her scary uh, French aunt who threatens to take her away to France. Writing style of the book is definitely something that was pretty hard to get into. Sentences went on for several lines and it was completely unnecessary really to have so many words in one sentence. It's just incredibly convoluted and what she was trying to say could easily have been said in like half the words. I wasn't sure if Evelina as a character was meant to be a satire as well. She was incredibly shocked by everything that was going on and she was constantly saying how she disapproved so much of what the other characters around her were doing. To me it didn't feel satirical, it just felt more sort of painful because the stupidity of these characters was causing so much distress to the main character, like just constantly throughout the book. I would probably recommend this if you are a fan of classics and you enjoy kind of getting into that really dense prose and I'm glad I read it. Most of the books I read I get from the library which is why I don't have copies of them because I have to take them back to the library before I can get around to filming a video. Um, but this next book that I read I actually have. It is called Parsnips Buttered Bamboozle and Boycott Modern Life One Email at a Time by Jo Lysett. Anyone familiar with British comedy panel shows or like British stand-up would no doubt Jo Lysett. He is famous for his email jokes. For his famous joke is probably where he uh, received a parking fine so he just emailed the people at the parking fine back and just said all this ludicrous ridiculous stuff to them and they didn't know how to take it and it was hilarious. The book is divided into chapters and each chapter deals with a certain aspect of modern life. For example, uh, there's a chapter on how to deal with ISIS, how to respond to homophobia, how to improve the railways. How it's just all a variety of stuff and in each chapter he usually introduces uh, one of his email jokes or one of his like Facebook message jokes or a text joke or something like that. Um, a lot of the jokes I had already seen in his stand-up, so if you're a massive fan of him, I mean, you probably love it anyway because you're a massive fan, but there is, I'd say maybe like half new material and half of it is stuff that I had already seen, but it was definitely really funny. I read this on the train to work and it was very difficult not to laugh out loud. <laughs> So if you don't know Joe Weiser, I would highly recommend after you finish this video searching his stand-up on YouTube. I was going to like this book anyway because I am obsessed with Joe Lysa. Um, He is bringing his stand-up to show to Sydney and because he's obviously not coming to Perth, I have decided to fly to Sydney to see him. Um, I'm obviously going to do other stuff on there. It was an incredibly snap decision and then my friend got so excited that she bought us two tickets so now I definitely have to go. The third book I read was Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. This book was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year. It's a really short book, it's only just 200 pages, but I still really struggle to finish this one unfortunately. The plot is this girl in her early 20s called Sophie and her mum Rose are in Spain. They are there because Rose says that she can't walk and their final hope is to go to this clinic in Spain uh, where this doctor is meant to be one of the best doctors for her ailment. I think the reason I struggled through this book was the writing style just didn't 
recruit me. It was incredibly humorless. The writing took itself very seriously. It took the metaphors that it was making very seriously. And I just found that quite annoying. <laughs> I really struggle with books that lack any kind of humour or self-awareness. It was taking itself so seriously and I felt like the content of the book wasn't really that serious. I found the two main characters really annoying as well. Sophie just sort of complained a lot and the mum character was so obviously manipulating her daughter and was so obviously could walk because occasionally she would walk and she literally drove a car in one scene and yet everyone's all still like oh we're treating your illness seriously but I didn't really get the point of it I think obviously it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize so presumably most people thought it was great um maybe I just am not the right sort of person to read it. The last three books I read in January were all by Diana Wynne Jones. Diana Wynne Jones is most famous for writing House Moving Castle which was made into the Studio Ghibli film. I read House Moving Castle this month because it's one of the books for my book club that my friends and I have. This is probably the third time I've read it, maybe fourth. I read Diana Wynne Jones House Moving Castle series and her Crestomancy series repeatedly as a child. My sister and I were both massive fans. I think I have almost all of Diana Wynne Jones' novels back at my parents' house. And so after I finished House Moving Castle and was completely blown away again by her amazing writing, when my sister and I visited our parents' house, we had to bring back our Crestomancy books so I could read them as well. Diana Wynne Jones' books, particularly the House Moving Castle and the Crestomancy series, are all uh, magical realism, I guess you would call them. House Movie Castle is set in a world very similar to ours, but different. There is magic, there everyone wears kind of like Edwardian clothing. And so the main plot of House Movie Castle is uh, this lady Sophie. She works in a hatter shop um, and she gets a visit from the Witch of the Waste who turns her into an old lady. And so she leaves her home because no, she knows that no one, none of her family are going to recognize her and she sets off into the hills where she bumps into Hal's moving castle, Hal the wizard who owns a moving castle. With the Crestomancy series they um, are all based on the concept of there being different worlds all grouped into different series and so our world is in series 12 and within that series there are different worlds and the connection is that they all speak the same languages. For the Crestomancy world itself is again a kind of like Edwardian type place but there's magic and it is in the same series as our world and Crestomancy is this great magician who has nine lives and he kind of like oversees the entire world to make sure that no one's doing anything bad and there's no ma bad magic happening. They are obviously written for children but Diana Wynne Jones' language, uh, the reason why I loved it anyway is because she never talks down to children. She also is just incredibly beautiful in the way she writes and the books are filled with a lot of humour. They are incredibly British as well, which is probably why I like them. I'm rereading the Crestomancy series in the order recommended by Diana Wynne Jones. She wrote this series and the House of Moving Castle series across decades, which I find so bizarre and I didn't realise when I was a kid that she'd done that. So the first Crestomancy book was written in 1977 and it is called Charmed Life. And then the one that she recommends to read second, which is called The Lives of Christopher Chant, was published in 1988 so literally 11 years later. Her most recent books in both series were actually written around the mid-2000s, which is when I was reading them, so I just assumed that they were all published recently because um, as kids we got to buy the latest one, brand new from the bookshop. I can just imagine how annoying it would have been for kids who'd read these books in like the 70s and 80s and then were like, yes, a great series, I can't wait for the next one. Oh, now I'm 30 and the next one's coming out. Imagine if JK Rowling had done that to Harry Potter, that would just be the worst. Anyone who is a fan of like Britishness and magic would definitely enjoy these and regardless of whether you're a child or an adult, I that's all the books I read in January of this year. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. See ya.